Kindly kneel for prayer to Jesus, the Divine Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, Divine Word made flesh, from the beginning you already were, before even time began, you are a Son, and with the Father and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. But in the fullness of time, you who created man, became man yourself. Through God, the Holy Spirit, and Mary, you became Jesus, divine Word made flesh. You came to our world to save us and show us how to live and love here, so we may live and love hereafter. Dear Jesus, divine Word incarnate, please teach us to follow you. May our love for you always be made flesh, not ever lost in word or song alone. In prayer, we come face to face with you, like you with the Father and the Holy Spirit. In love and service, may we likewise come to face to face with our sisters and brothers, the least of them most of all. For as we treat each other, so do we treat you. In your name we pray now always and in always. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the following intentions of this Mass as shown on the screen.
blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. We are on the 29th week in Ordinary Time, Thursday. Our Mass presider for today is Reverend Father Louis Punzalan SBD. Our celebration will now begin. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, the Gospel reading for today contains some very passionate but disturbing words from Jesus. Among other things, the Lord says in the Gospel, I have come to set the earth on fire. From now on, a household of five will be divided. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. What does this statement tell us? It is telling us that our priority should be Christ. Everything else, everybody else, is secondary to Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy let us pray Almighty and ever living God grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking in human terms because of your weakness of your nature. For just as you presented the parts of your bodies as slaves to impurity, 
and to lawlessness to lawlessness. So now, present them as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. But what profit did you get then from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit that you have leads to sanctification and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like shaft which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Sing ye first the King Dumb of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Alleluia, Alleluia. the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided. Three against two, and two against three. A father will be divided against his son. A son against his father a mother against her daughter, a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are some passionate and disturbing words from the Lord in today's Gospel. Passionate but disturbing. Number one, Jesus mentions his deep desire to cast fire on the earth. The Lord says, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already blazing. My dear friends, in the Old Testament, the imagery of fire is a symbol of the powerful presence of God. 
we can cite some illustrations. We remember Moses at the burning bush. We remember the pillar of fire that accompanied the Israelites by night as they wandered through the desert to the promised land. We remember the tongues of fire that hovered over the disciples at Pentecost. Fire is a symbol of the enduring presence of God. If we will apply it to our life, to the seminarians, to Brother Eugene and myself included, the spark of vocation, the fire of vocation that must become a blaze must be kept. Do we still have the intensity? Do we still have the passion for our vocation? Do we still have the fire for our vocation? Do you still have the fire for your work? Do you still have the fire for your life? Do you still have the fire for your profession? Our wish, not only for our seminarians, but for everybody is that you keep the fire of God burning in your heart. It is this fire of Pentecost that burns the hearts of men and women and draws them to change the direction of their lives. And for the wish of Jesus to take place, we have to play our part we need to spread some of that fire of God's love everywhere. The bottom line is that we have to keep the fire of God burning in our hearts. The second, our Lord expresses a longing for His baptism to be accomplished. The Lord says, There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Baptism here refers to the terrible suffering. Baptism refers to the death by which man will be liberated and saved. The rite of baptism where the person to be baptized was immersed in the baptismal pool was seen as a parallel to Jesus going down into death and emerging to new life of the resurrection. This is the second point in the gospel. The third, that the Lord said, He has come not to bring peace but division on the earth. At first sight, this is a difficult saying. It does not make any sense at all. Is Jesus not the Prince of Peace? Why did he say that he did not come to bring peace but division? Isn't that a contradiction in terms when he claims he is the Prince of Peace? Did Jesus not say at the Last Supper, that he was giving his peace to the disciples, a peace that the world could not give and that no one could take away. Did he not also say, Come to me all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest? Was the final greeting of the risen Christ to his disciples in the upper room not peace, be with you. Yes, my dear friends, but he also warned the disciples that after he was gone, they should expect a rough ride in life. The disciples would be hauled before rulers and governors. They would be beaten. They would be jailed and put to death. And people would think they were doing well in reading the world of the disciples and in that sense Jesus was certainly 
not going to bring peace. And by the time this gospel was written, the prophecy of Jesus had been well borne out and there was a lot more to come. The breakup of families, father against mother, parents against children, in-laws against in-laws, were unfortunately only too common as one or more members in a family decided to follow Christ and be baptized. This must have been very painful experiences which no one wanted. Jesus warned that those who wished to follow Him had to be ready, if necessary, to leave home and family and enter into a new family of brothers and sisters. This is the missionary spirit of the church. Our seminarians here at Christ the King and in Tagaytay, when they become priests, they will be missioned to different parts of the world. Some of them will go to Zimbabwe. Others will go to Ghana and Congo, to Papua New Guinea and Japan, Australia, Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Portugal, Germany, Cuba. The SVD is some in some 80 countries all over the world. Are you ready to leave home? Are you ready to leave family and enter into a new family of God in another place, in another country as missionaries? That is why the challenge for us by the gospel today, especially to the seminarians, slowly, slowly detach yourself from your family. My dear friends, what does this last point in the gospel tell us? For all of us, it is saying that the essence of Christianity is that loyalty to Christ takes precedence over even the dearest loyalties of this earth. This does not mean that we love our families less. That is not the point. It does not mean that we love our families less. But it means that we love Jesus more. In final analysis, Christianity is not for the weak of heart. Discipleship is not for the coward. It is for the brave. It is for the strong. Discipleship is for the faithful. Amen. Let us all stand. We place our faith in God the Father as we present before Him the needs and concerns of our lives. Let our response be, Sustain us in your service, O Lord. Sustain us in your service, O Lord. That the leaders of the church who are openly persecuted may be given the courage and strength to remain constant in their faith. We pray. Sustain us in your service, O Lord. That parents may have the strength and courage to guide their children in the ways of faith and Christian life. We pray. Sustain us in your service, O Lord. That families and communities divided by religious differences may discover the truth and show respect to one another. We pray. Sustain us in your service, O Lord that the sick, the elderly, and the disabled may receive love and attention from their family and friends. We pray. Sustain, Sustain us, us in your, your service, service, O Lord. Lord. For our civil and political leaders, that the Holy Spirit may guide them to make sound and swift policy decisions to fight this public health crisis and come to the aid of those lacking in basic necessities of life 
and devise social and economic solutions for the welfare of the citizenry. We also pray and thank you for the ordinary people who find ways to help the least and the less among the society. May the true Bayanihan spirit prevail among all of us. We pray. Sustain, Sustain us, us in your service, service O Lord. Lord. That those who have died may be happy forever in the kingdom of the Father. We pray. Sustain, Sustain us, us in your service, service, O Lord. God, our Father, you sent your Son to help us in our struggles, comfort us in our pain, give us the strength to always act with trust in your word, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We ask this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior, and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Hosanna 
in the highest, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the chalice to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in my memory. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread all over the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, remember your servants, Mary Madela Felix and Darlene Madlambayan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like His may also be one with Him in His resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the same way Jesus prayed. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety and fear, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. You said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Greet one another with a sign of peace.
Lamb of, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My dear friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sin of the world. Happy are those invited to His banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I mean thy words that I may never leave thy side. From all the evil that surrounds me, defend me. And when the call of death arrives, bid me come to thee. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, 
Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo de Luis, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Joseph Frenadimitz, Pray for us. Please be seated for some announcements. Kanda umaga, may buntag. Good morning to everybody. May mga pagkakataon na katulad kahapon, nakakatanggap po ako ng sobre na walang pangalan, subalit may laman para sa mga seminarista. Kung kanino man po galing ang sobring ito, maraming 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 salamat from the bottom of our hearts. In the name of our Rector, thank you so very much. I cannot read your signature, but from the bottom of my heart, I personally would like to thank you. This will go a long way in helping our seminarians. Meron pa po akong mga natatanggap, galing din sa mga maraming taong mabubuting kalooban, like from a couple in Cebu, Dai, I will not mention your name, but you know who you are from Banilad. Lagan kayong salamat. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. From the seminarians, from the rector, from the SVDs here, from all of us. Daghan kayong salamat. And from a doctor in St. Luke's Doc, thank you so very much. And from our benefactors and sponsors from other countries, maraming maraming salamat po sa mga tulong na inyong patuloy na ipinadadala para sa ating mga seminarista. Sometimes I am at a loss for words. I do not know what to say. But really, I mean it and we mean it. Maraming salamat. I also would like to take this opportunity to express our personal condolences to Hill. I will not give your family name. Your wife passed away, Darlene. We express our condolences. Hill is one of our ardent supporters for the seminarians. I'm sorry for your loss, Hill. We will continue to pray for you and your family. I would also like to take this opportunity to greet one of our donors, a 95-year-old woman from Cebu. Tita Pilar, maraming salamat. Dagan kayong salamat, Tita Pilar. Happy 95th birthday to you, Mrs. Pilar Cusi. I'd like to take this opportunity again para manawagan. Ipagpatuloy ang panawagan in the name of our seminarians. If you would like to help send these young guys to the priesthood, to the missionary life, we would like to ask for your assistance. The assistance is continuing sapagkat ginagamit po nila ang inyong itinutulong. Ginagamit nilang pambayad sa board and lodging at sa kasa tuition. So, wala po itong katapusang pagtawag, pagkatok sa inyong mga puso. We are showing, we are flashing in front of you our our bank details. Banco de Oro, account name. Mag-ingat po kayo. Divine Word Mission Seminary Inc. That is the account name. Be careful with the account number. Minsan, nag- marami hong account number dito. 0002209124 Meron din po tayong GCash numbers at meron din tayong email address in case you want to talk to us. Ludi from Toronto dai maraming salamat. And to our other benefactors, I cannot mention all your names. I will not identify you fully, but just probably your first name, Ludi. Thank you so much. And to the others who are helping us, we owe you our debt of gratitude. God reward you a hundredfold. Let us all stand. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.